Good morning, everybody. It's me, Solaris, coming at you pre-recorded as we do the off-season recap. Figure out what the fuck we had going on and what the fuck we are going to be doing in the future. Uh, I'm just going to do this all in one take because trying to do it pre-recorded ruined my soul. I'm not that good at planning. So, just going to start off with it here. Going into the financials. Since we uh, came in not getting relegated place... We managed to end the season and get $500,000 from prize money along with a big board pay raise. We're up to $1.4 million in the payroll. We, at the start of last season, were only paying our players about $480,000. We are now spending a total of $1.1 million right now. We're not even at the maximum cap. But we still went majorly upgraded from where we uh, started last year. So I completely forgot, but it turns out we actually won a Swedish Cup qualifier, which is apparently uh, the way that their National Cup works, and uh, advanced to the group stage, which apparently happens in a separate year. We did that at the beginning of last season, and now we're apparently in the group stage. And it's not looking great. First of all, we're playing against Oster's IF, who, in case you don't remember, just won our division. They just won themselves an automatic promotion to the Premier Division of Sweden and were the champions of our division. So, not looking great. Second person on our group is the, the another Swedish Premier Division team. They came in 12th last year. So that's an oof, but you know, at least it's two, at least it's a new guy in a low tier premier division. Oh, Hammerby. Who the fuck is Hammerby? Oh, the team that came in second place of the premier division last team last year. So yeah, that's not great. I don't know how a group stage works exactly, but I, we're just going to be the bottom here. Like it's just, we're going to get destroyed by every single person in this group. It's not going to be pretty, but maybe we'll make some money out of it. I don't know. Maybe we'll get some ticket sales if we get any of these games at home. So that's a plus. So when it comes to transfers, we brought in a good amount of new people. Uh, a solid half of more of the starting team are going to be uh, new names, new jerseys. All right. We paid for two of them, just of 20000 and 12000 The rest of them we managed to get up on free transfers. Uh, a lot of them not wanting to stick with the club that they were currently at. In terms of who we got rid of, uh, a lot of people. Instead of trying to go through each person individually that we got rid of, just assume that anyone who is not uh, a starter or a substitute mentioned is just gone. I let them off on a free if I couldn't sell them. Looking at some of the new people that we brought in, we have Henrik Hardinson who's going to be coming in as our new advanced forward. He's going to be our main goal scorer, hopefully. He's got 15 pace, 14 acceleration. The golden three here is sitting at a beautifully even 14 across the board. He's got no major deficiencies except for maybe concentration. So we got a plan for that. You see, concentration makes your me is the speed at which your mental attributes begin to decline going into the game. The longer you're in it, the long, the uh, l more damage done to your mental attributes. So we noticed that Kabaddi also has a, uh, a particular problem with maintaining concentration throughout his game. So we're going to play both of them. That's right. For the entire season, as long as neither of them get injured, our plan is is to play one striker for the entire first half and to switch him out every time at halftime with Kabaddi. We don't know if it's going to work. It's a crazy idea that we had, but that's the game plan. Try to have a fresh, beautiful advance forward the whole way through. Second person new to the team is Amandus uh, Armandus. Kirks. I can't say his name. Uh, this guy's whole job, target forward. He's going to be there to jump. That's it. He's got a jumping reach of 16 and a strength of 15. Heading's not amazing, but I don't think it needs to be. His whole job would be sit there and head the ball. That's all I want him to do. Finding a striker who could head 
was a problem. It was a big pain in the ass, and this was the best thing I could find. The rest of them had just too much deficiencies in other big areas to make up for the, uh, the finishing first touch or anything else like that. Next big person we got coming on the team is the ball-winning midfielder here, Rain Hadidi. Hadidi here we pulled uh, from uh, Morocco. Hadidi came on the team only because we hired a new scout over the offseason that gave us uh, a little bit of knowledge about this player. And uh, I like him. He's angry. The man's got 20 aggression, 16 stamina, 8 strength is sad, but he's got pace, he's got good pace, he's got good natural fitness, he's got amazing teamwork and tackling. This guy, I'm hoping, is going to be a very dominant ball-winning midfielder. Coming in next, we got our boy, Niles Bertelson. Niles Bertelson will be the left fullback. His job will be to be landing crosses across the field, all right? He'll be operating very high up, if possible, on the attack, uh, but also hopefully have the stamina and the pace to be able to come back and use his marking and positioning and pass, uh, his marking and positioning. Our plan when it comes to fullbacks is to be defensive over offensive. We will sacrifice their offensive capability for defensive prowess in this season. I am utterly ashamed of how last season went in terms of how many goals we gave up throughout the entire year. It pisses me the fuck off. It was infuriating to get gold on that often. So defense will be a priority this season. If we get a chance to upgrade either our offense or our defense, I will choose defense every time. That is the goal of the season to end it with one of if not the least amount of goals allowed at the end that's the fucking goal of this season we have a new lineup for the defense central defender balder hans stefanson this man is going to be a cover he's got a pace of 14 and acceleration of 14 and a positioning of 12 a tackling of 11. his job will be to sit back and to sweep up any balls that head, that head back there. Any through balls, anything like that. That's his only job. So we just want to have good speed. That's why he's fast. We are planning on working with a two-man combo here and with very distinct jobs. That's why we have his partner, Hugo Limney. Right? Hugo Limney, he's okay defensively. He's got 11 positioning. You know, nine tackling, 11 marking. It's not the best. It's not the best, right? But that's not his job. His job is to jump. He's got 18 jumping reach, 14 strength, 13 heading. On corners, this is the man we're aiming for. He's going to be hopefully giving us some corner kills this time. But with the combination of him working with Stefanson... The dream is, anytime a high-floated through ball starts coming through, Limney will be there every time. And if Limney misses, Stefanson won't and will catch it on the ground. That's the dream. That's the idea. Uh, that does it for most of our new people. Looking at it as a whole, this is what our team is looking like this season. Uh, you'll notice we have a few familiar names from last year that will be sticking around. A lot of them in substitution roles. Some of them needing to be retrained entirely. Uh, of course, we have Quihala. It will be staying as the uh, left fullback's uh, substitute. Hugo Leonardo will be staying on as the right fullback's uh, substitute. Colgiga and Spurt will be staying on as uh, Carlero and Metzala, reverse respectively. Uh, Wilson Cedarblad will be playing advanced playmaker with Joel Anderson Siegeland coming out of his inside forward position to take it up in the midfield as the advanced playmaker substitute. He's actually surprisingly good for that. He's got a uh, 14 vision, 11 passing, 12 decision making. Like he'll be a good substitute for that advanced playmaker position, which we need a good substitute for that position because it will be the heart of the team. Uh, Kabaddi Kentoski will be taking the advanced uh, forward uh, substitute position 
Pathy Prudence, the former defensive midfielder, will actually be coming up to learn target forward. He only has a very unconvincing knowledge of how to play a striker, but that's enough for me to be willing to do it for him. Because remember, the point of the target forward is simply to jump, hit the ball with your head. All right. He has a jumping reach of 17, a strength of 13, the aggression and bravery of 13 and 12 to go for it. So hopefully he can learn the position because if he can learn how to operate in the striker position, he will be a very good target forward substitute. Better than any of the other options I could find on the market. Better than any of them that I could find. Tactically, I'm up to my old bullshit again. I have, for the longest time, every time it comes to a new year, I want to do a, a narrow tactic. I love the idea of a narrow tactic. I have never made a narrow tactic work before, but I feel like we have what it takes to make it work this time. I have so much more knowledge of how these positions interact with each other. I have so much knowledge of how these roles interact with the zones that they live in and where players are at certain times, and what, like, width means to a tactic. So we're going to be trying the narrow again. We're running the advanced forward and a target forward up front, followed by the advanced playmaker. We're going to have three positions in the midfield with no defensive midfielder, but that's not necessarily true with how we have it set up. Carlero on the left, providing a lot of defensive support. Spurt here used to be the ball-winning midfielder last year, if you remember. So he is, as you can see, fairly fairly speedy in terms of the a defensive midfielder anyways. Um, he has a marking of 13, passing of 13, teamwork of 13, positioning of 8. Like he's a, you know, he was a ball-winning midfielder. We're moving him to the Carlero position because he has enough passing, enough teamwork to be able to provide a nice up a nice area for the defense to move the ball up the field. He should be able to do that well. And when uh, the wing back here goes on the attack, he should be able to fill in behind them fairly well and still provide defense for that position. On the right, Kogiga will be running a Metzala on attack. He will be trying to move up into this half space uh, and get just another threat in on the goal from the right uh, at a dangerous time. Hopefully to overload is we'll have the target forward, the advanced forward, the advanced playmaker should be up there somewhere with uh, both the wing back on the left and the Metzal on the right making runs. That's the idea. Hopefully it'll all work. The fullback on the right will be mainly providing defense, just covering the area behind the Metzala as he makes his runs, uh, which works well for my boy Algeria here from the Congo because he's not fast. He has a pace of seven, acceleration of eight. But you know what he does have? He knows how to play defense. He has a positioning of 15, a tackling of 17, marking of 12. All right, as long as he doesn't have to run far, the man knows how to play the ball. And then, to give a nice defensive bit to the middle, we have Hadidi playing ball-winning midfielder on defense. Hopefully, what that means is that he will drop back a little bit more and play more like a defensive midfielder on support in terms of position. With him uh, being able to just stop any kind of central attack coming in, uh... And, you know, help out Limney whenever through balls and whatever else might come this way. Of course, our defensive setup, I've already explained it. We get central, uh, central defender on stopper, whole job, jump, head the ball, get it away. I don't want to lose headers anymore on defense. When the ball comes through, I do not want to see a miss. No striker should be able to outjump my boy. No striker should be able to outjump him. And if that happens, Stefanson here should be enough should be fast enough to catch anything like that that comes through. I'm hoping that they develop a tight teamwork and just dominate central defender. That's the idea. And that's a uh, that's the tactical bit. This all of this, the in possession tra uh, transition, all that, that's still up in the air. We're probably going to be redoing a lot of uh, the instructions whenever it comes to the uh, stream tomorrow.
But for the purposes of positions and role, I do not think that we're going to be changing much of anything here. But I believe that is it. Uh, the training and everything staff mostly stayed the same. Uh, took a look at all the new people. Took a look at the new tactic. Everything's good. Hope you all enjoyed this recap. See y'all tomorrow.